Hello, hello, welcome. <laughs> We're live here from Roots Restaurant and I have just once again sent Kenneth away at the very last minute to pick up one last ingredient. Here we come. There he is. There hey Kenneth. Go. Excellent. Welcome. Welcome. A nice life. We're Great. live. We're live. Here I'm gonna hand off. I'm gonna switch this no, what's gonna make this easier? Just be gentle. We're doing the handoff, we're doing the switch around. We just wanted to be on time today, guys, because I've been late for weeks and weeks and weeks now. Hallelujah! And I'm calling out my computer. There we are. Look at that. We we got this, Kenneth. <laughs> we got a system. Like eight months into these lives, we got a system. All right, my computer's frozen up a little bit here, but I think there we go. There we are. Breakfast brilliance. I'm sure if you have tuned in, you've noticed that that's what I've named today's video, and Kenneth and I just had a little laugh about that. It's not, I don't know how brilliant it's going to be, but I thought it was a clever name. Breakfast brilliant. George Bell is watching. Hey from Ontario, George. I think summer is with you guys just about by now up in Canada, from what I gather from friends and family that the, the weather has been cooperating. We got my cousin Jeff is watching. Hello, Jeff Cornelison. Satu is watching. All right, we've already got some people on board. We got some humans joining us behind you. Can, you. Want to say hi to all of our viewers? Yeah, I'll say hi. Spin around, Kev. Introduce yourself. Hello there. My name is Brian Big from Virginia, and I'm here to watch Mick cook us some wonderful food. And you've been with us all week this yeah, week, I've been right? here all week enjoying the great food that she cooks. Amazing. Wonderful. And how was your time? Did you get your miracle this week? I had my miracle. Woohoo! I'm ready to roll. Yeah. yeah. Well, pull up a chair. Nice to see got you. Got it. Thank you. I'll tell you, this guy's been like, he's been helping me stay on track this afternoon to get ready because you know I'm, I've been late for months now, every every Sunday. And this is the first time that I've been on time in like two months because he's been reminding me, are you guys, are you ready? What are you doing for your Facebook Live? And he keeps reminding me, so that was really helpful. So we got Billy Hershen watching. Billy, oh my heart, so nice to see you, Billy. Anna Maria is watching. <sighs> All right, guys, breakfast brilliance. As always, any questions, type them in the comments here. I'm gonna to try to do my best to pay attention and answer them today. And again, as always, if you have any requests for recipes, themes, ideas, discussion, talking points, anything you want me to cover in future Facebook Lives, please put that in the comments as well because I'm running out of content. <laughs> Just kidding, I can never really run out of content, but I would love some inspiration. Fiona Mayo is watching. Carmen St. Louis is watching from Ontario. A lot of Canada representing this afternoon, which is lovely to see. So, I don't know why I keep doing this today. Peace. Welcome. We're live on Facebook. I see you seeing me. <laughs> okay, so breakfast brilliance. I just, this morning I started thinking, what am I gonna do? I came up with a title, what am I gonna do to fill a little Facebook live talking about breakfast? Because I know we've covered a lot of breakfast recipes already on the, on the, on the lives here. I think we've done, you've been watching, we've done Soaked oats, we've done chia puddings, we've done tons of smoothies and smoothie bowls, we've done pancakes. What else have we done, Kenneth? We've done a lot of breakfast yeah. stuff. But then someone requested, this is a viewer request, someone said give me more breakfast ideas. So this, I call this breakfast breakthroughs. Um, so I'm just gonna do a couple of breakfast hacks, if you will. And we're gonna talk about not all things plant-based, so we're gonna do some eggs this morning because I had a lot of guests this, this actually this week talking to me about their, their food needs and one of the guests in particular said that they had been eating eggs up until the week before they got here and then their body said they didn't want eggs anymore so they haven't had eggs since they used to eat them every day and then I had another guest that said she never ate eggs up until she was here and since doing the plant medicine she's really been craving eggs every morning so that's really interesting so I'm gonna show you a couple things about eggs I'm gonna show you um, a typical Costa Rican breakfast I'm gonna show you a vegan French toast what else did I write? That this is my, my real professional notes that I was making. So that's what we're gonna do. So I'm just gonna get right into it today. Just one quick look. We got Christine Australia saying, can anyone see this? I can see you, Christina. Um, Daronda's watching. So nice to see you. I don't know why. Daronda. <laughs> I said that with an accent. Diana's watching. Fiona's giving me heart eyeballs. Which I love that emoticon. Emoji. All right, so I'm gonna get to it. I can't see myself moving on the video. I hope everyone else could someone just give me a heads up, a thumbs up, a thumbs down if the video is okay? How is the internet connection? It might be a little bit wonky because we've got a ton of people here. We're so connected though, right, Kenneth? It hasn't told us we're connected. Okay, perfect. 
so then I'm not going to be too concerned that like I'm in like stop motion on my computer screen. Can you see that? Like I'm not moving at all. It's not at all attractive to keep myself. I'm like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I digress. That was probably really attractive, the faces I just made too. <laughs> okay, so I've got my frying pan heating up here. I'm going to put it on a medium heat. This is just my little hot plate because I want to show you a couple of chef's hands. I'm literally putting my hand in the pan to see if it's hot. Don't, I do not advise that at home. I'm going to turn it up high actually, just so we can get this, get this smoking hot. And I've got a little bit of water in there and once that starts to bubble, I'm going to know it's hot. That's another little secret. <laughs> Instead of putting your hand in there again. So typical Costa Rican breakfast. Have I talked about gallo pinto? I think we might have made it on one, at one point, but I'm just going to talk about it real quick again because I'm going to have an add on to this. So there's just a really simple version of our gallo pinto, which is um, in, in Costa Rican Spanish, we, that translates to painted, pinto. painted, Pinto. Like pinted, pinto. which is painted, isn't it? No, pinto. pinto. What's pinto? Pinto is that. It's, it's, <laughs> people say pinto also when you have a horse and two two colors. Okay, so it's like yeah, so it's like colored. Okay, yeah, like a pinto horse, and then, and and gallo is rooster. Yeah. So it's like the good morning multicolored dish, which is really just translates to rice and beans that's fried in a frying pan, quite often with. Uh, sweet pepper and onion and garlic. Cilantro is added at the last minute. And if you're here in Costa Rica, quite often we add in um, a condiment called linzano, which is this really delicious, savory, um, processed, highly processed, but delicious condiment that I don't have any guilt or shame about using because it's delicious. And I've also put on here just some really simple baked plantains. Typically you would also get scrambled eggs, maybe a slice of fried cheese, um, avocado, what have you. And today we're gonna add a fried egg to this. But I'm just gonna show you a couple things, a couple little, egg hacks. So the first thing what I've done is I've had my kitchen get a couple of eggs ready for me and they've sweetly labeled this for me because Lord knows, have, I don't know about you guys if you've ever been confused in your fridge which eggs, you, like when you've got hard boiled eggs and raw, uh oh, which is which. So they've labeled huevos duros, which is hard boiled, and huevos crudo, which is raw. So they've helped me out that way. I, I think my kitchen by now knows that I'm a bit of a menace. <laughs> and if they don't explain these things to me, then I'm, there's bound to be a mess. So we're gonna take our huevo duro first, because I wanna show you something. Because I know, for myself at home, if I'm ever, I mean, I haven't eaten eggs in a long time, so I've kind of been turned off in the middle lately, but that might change tomorrow. But I hate peeling hard boiled eggs. Big pain in the butt. So there's a couple secrets that I that I try to utilize when I'm when I'm making hard boiled eggs. And one of them is when I'm cooking a bunch and I want to peel them right away. Is when I when they when they're in the pan for the amount of time that they need to be in the pan. What I typically do is I'll put the eggs in cold water in the pan, crank it up. Once the waters come to a full boil, then I turn off the heat and I let them sit for 18 minutes. And that comes, that brings a pretty hard boiled egg, um, which is what I typically do when I'm catering events because a lot of people are pretty picky about having it too soft. And then what I'll do before I drain the water actually, when the eggs are done, I will crack the egg just enough so that the skin is broken and I'll put it back into the water and just let it rest for like five, 10, 15 minutes. And then what happens there is the water in the pot seeps in under the skin and creates a bit of a space creation and like it creates space between the actual egg the inside skin and the shell so then the egg the, the shell will peel off a lot easier so that's one idea another idea is take your egg and cut it in half when it's still completely shell if you're not i mean if you don't need your egg whole just stick your knife through it and you've got your egg in half and then the skin the, the peel will just come off that much easier save yourself the grief right that's a good little secret isn't it in my garbage bowl. So what, by the way, garbage bowl. This is a thing I picked up from Rachel Ray. There's a lot of things I picked up from Rachel Ray back in the day. In my 20s, I used to spend, I had a boyfriend who was 12, 13 years my senior. Mom, you remember Scott. And he had two children. And what him and I did on our evenings is we would cook dinner and then we would sit and watch the Food Network. Oh, well, he would cook dinner and I would sit and watch the Food Network drinking wine. Because that was when I was drinking two bottles of wine every day. Seven months sober on Tuesday. What? Yes, seven months sober from alcohol on Tuesday. Super excited about that. But back to Rachel Ray. Um, this is uh, the garbage bowl is one thing that I picked up from Rachel Ray. She recommended always having a big empty bowl on the counter with you when you're doing any sort of meal prep, and then you can just be tossing all your food scraps in there instead of constantly reaching for the compost bin or what have you. If you have a, a green bin program in your area, just put your little kitchen size green bin on the counter with you so you're not constantly moving around the kitchen to dump your scraps or making a pile on your cutting board. You can just toss your organics right into the bowl. 
Jennifer Sodini has joined. Waleska's joined. Leanne has joined. Wendy Davis is looking good. Hi from Wendy in the UK. Oh yeah, I forgot to check in. I asked you guys to let me know. Christine Australia says, can you make Rhythmia Salsa Lanzano? I could try my hand at making a healthy, all natural version of that. That's a very good idea. Kenneth, mental note. Let's add that to a future Facebook Live. I'll see if I can come up with that. Cousin Jeff says, watching while walking into Canadian Tire, the video is fine. Awesome! Christine says the video is fine. Savannah Cook is saying hello. Carmen St. Louis is saying her video is great. Beautiful. Christine Estrella says, can you make the world famous Costa Rican salsa? I cannot remember the name. Oh, she's asking me about the Lanzano, Lin I think, Lizano, right? Lanzano. Yeah. Perfect. So we already talked, talked about that. <sighs> okay. So what was I saying? Rachel Ray, garbage bowl. Got that covered. The other thing I still have under my belt that, that I got from Rachel Ray is I still refer to extra virgin olive oil as EVOO, which I know a lot of people, <laughs> and chefs in particular, cringe about that. But it's especially when I'm writing recipes, I'm sure you've seen it, Kenneth, where I've had EVOO written in the recipe instead of extra virgin olive oil. It's just a great shortcut. EVOO. And what else did she say? She used to have a lot of really fun things on her show. I don't know if her show still exists on the Food Network, Rachel Ray's, but I loved it. 30 minute meals. I used that cookbook a lot when I started cooking. So, hack number one cut your egg in half and then peel it. Makes life a whole lot easier. All right? Moving right along. Egg hack number two is I'm gonna show you a really fun way to fry your egg and make it a perfect round egg. So what I've got here is just an onion. This was like a pretty decent sized onion and that's what you're gonna need for this for this uh, idea. And what I've done is I've just cut off this really thick round edge and you want it to be super thick. Because what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pop out most of the inside and save this, chop that up for your gallo pinto later. That can be the onion chopped up in your gallo pinto. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna place that in our pan. Add a little bit of oil in there. This is gonna be the little vessel for cooking our egg inside. So it's gonna make like a perfectly round egg. So then I'm gonna reach into my huevos crudos. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> that was a good sound effect, Kenneth. See, I'm always doing the sound effects. Now I've got Kenneth doing sound effects. If you've ever been doing it in my yoga classes, there's also lots of sound effects. Oh, I haven't done my yoga. No, I don't need to do that today. I did that in the restaurant earlier, my yogic breath. Okay. And the other thing I always recommend, and I tell this to my, my kitchen staff because quite often they forget, when you're cracking multiple eggs for scrambled eggs and whatnot, for example, I always make sure that I have, yeah, two bowls. One bowl, this is good, I've got two here. One bowl that I'm gonna actually crack my egg into, and I'm making a messy one on purpose here. Because I think I've shown you guys this trick before. Look, I'm just coming up with all the egg hacks today. So I purposely made a messy crack here, so you see I've got some shells in there. So, a really easy way to get your shell out is to use another piece of your, your shell. You stick it in here. Let me go back around here. There's more down here. Can you see that, Kenneth? So you used one of the big pieces of the broken shell, and it kind of acts like a magnet to pick up. See that big that piece in there that I, I just picked it up? It kind of just sucks it. it sucks it right up. They attract, they're attracted to each other, these pieces of shell. They belong together. So I got one more piece in there. I'm just using broken piece to go in there and pick up the other broken piece just like that and so the reason why I have two bowls is I will crack individual eggs into this bowl and once I can clarify that they are shell free then I'll dump them into another bowl so on and so forth so then I'll crack another individual egg here once it's shell free I'll add it to the other bowl so that I'm constantly just adding shell free eggs to this one bowl otherwise if I kept just cracking my all my eggs one after another into one main bowl if I had a shell fall in, I'd be digging through up to 20, you know, 20, 30 eggs at a time trying to get out one little shell. So it's much easier to deal with one egg in one bowl as opposed to 30 eggs in one piece of shell in one bowl. Does that make sense? Am I making sense? Yes. All right. Oh. All right. Thank you from the peanut gallery. Okay, so I made a really ugly mess of this egg, but I don't really care because it's going to taste the same. And then the idea here is you take your egg, if you had your yolk still whole, it would look a lot prettier, but we all know by now that I'm not the cleanest and the tidiest. And then you just dump your egg inside that little ring. And then you're gonna get this beautiful, perfectly round egg, which is great if you're doing things like, I'll move this before I run the water. If you're doing like an egg McMuffin or an egg sandwich or something, instead of like, quite often you see people will fry eggs and then use like a, cut, a cookie cutter to cut the shape of a circle, but this just saves you that extra step. Just use this onion, you can reuse it several times because it becomes too, too soft. Um, and then you just let your egg cook. You could, if you had an oven safe um, sartén or frying pan like I do here, just um, put this in the oven to finish off. But I'm just gonna let it sit there and cook. 
Padmini says, hello, seekers. Jordan Hooper says, potheads, it's 3 in the afternoon. Potheads? What do you mean it's 3 in the afternoon? What do you mean? I don't get it. Jordan, clarify for me. Is it because we're making sound effects? <laughs> Fully sober. There's been nothing but joy in our infused into our into our bodies. A San says, hi, beautiful Meg. You're so sweet. Mark is watching. <sighs> okay. So, as that's going... We'll move on to the next thing on my list. What did I say? Ah, another really awesome, simple breakfast are vegan gluten-free banana muffins. And as we all know, if you've been to Rhythmia, this is a breakfast staple here. It's on the buffet every single day. This is a recipe available. That's actually, the missed recipe is the reason why I wrote my most recent cookbook, Miracle Meals, available on Amazon as well as in the gift shop here at Rhythmia. Little pluggity plug plug. Um, Jerry actually asked me to write the cookbook specifically to get this muffin recipe out into the ethers because everyone was asking for it. So this is our vegan. It's a gluten-free muffin recipe that I do here, and I use a, um, a gluten-free flour that's made up of white rice, garbanzo, and yuca or cassava root. Um, we add a little bit extra liquid into the batter these days, and it makes them a little bit fluffier. And like as far as gluten-free recipes go, this is a. Oh, someone didn't strain the baking powder and baking soda through a sieve. I'm gonna need to talk to my staff about that. They whipped these up for my live here and they did not. See, this is why, if you ever, <laughs> learning opportunity, this is why if you ever are doing a baking recipe and you wonder if you're not, if you're not big on baking and you wonder why they tell you to sieve and put all of your dry ingredients through a fine sieve mesh, a fine, fine mesh sieve or a colander or a pastry strainer, this is why. Because this is chunks of baking soda that did not get put through the strainer and now they're little chunks of baking soda in the muffin. Disgusting. So this is a learning opportunity. I'm gonna have a conversation with my kitchen staff after this because that is not something you wanna bite into. So do what the instructions say and sieve, strain. What's another word? English words, I'm, I'm, I'm like, what's that? Yeah. Sift, sift, that's a good one, sift. Sift your dry ingredients when you're baking. We're gonna have a conversation with the staff about that one after, right? Right, Kenneth? Yes. All right, I'm glad we ripped that open. All the things we discovered during our Facebook Lives. What's going on over here? Yes, Christina's telling me sift. Thank you. It's like, like I always, the simplest words are the things that I forget. Jamie Ray is watching. Amazing. Oh, yeah, it's Pat Mini saying, oh, boy, that's trouble. It is. Hello from Chile. Looks amazing. Macarena is watching us from Chile. How fun is that? Hey, let's play a game. Wherever you guys are watching from, type it in the comments. I want to see all the different countries and places that I have viewers from right now. Please, I would love that. That would make me very happy if you could do that. I know there's a lot of people watching from Ontario. Adam Bell is saying, if you want to shift, you want to, you got to sift. Amen, brother. Michelle's saying she loves those muffins. That's what he said. What? <laughs> Jerry, how do you give me this free reign to be live? <laughs> I'm always bound to say something offensive. Okay, let's check in on our egg, shall we? Spain, New York, London, Colorado. Oh, wow. I love this game. Chicago. Oh. I love that you're playing along with me, Kenneth. Thank you. That saves me distracting myself anymore. So you keep yelling them out as they come. So I'm, this egg is slowly cooking away. I'm going to give it a little, watch this, and make a mess. Woo! Just a little flipperoni so that we can get that finished up. And we'll move on to the next thing. So, Mississippi. Miss M I S S I S S. Hi, PPI. Canada. Canada. I don't know why I know how to spell Mississippi fast. Argentina. I don't know how to... Argentina. Wow. Florida. <laughs> Florida. <laughs> South America. Everything sounds better with it. Saint Thomas. Saint Thomas. Finland. Thomas. Finland. Oh, I, I know we definitely have Finland viewers. We have got a. Marcos, week. Florida. Amazing. Who is Kenneth? Me. <laughs> <laughs> Who's asking? Who is Kenneth? <laughs> <laughs> Who is Kenneth? Padmini. Kenneth. Italy. Yeah. Kenneth, this is Kenneth. If you haven't met Kenneth, if you go, we have new viewers. Being very careful. This is Kenneth. Hi everybody, and this is Kenneth. Thank he, you for being in touch. He is my amazing, amazing front and back of house food and beverage manager Very here at Rhythmia. Be strong. He helps everything. He, he helps me run this place. He helps keep the ship steering. He does all of anything that I can't do in Spanish because my Spanish isn't good enough. There you go. He knows so much more about running a, a, an all-inclusive resort and a buffet restaurant than I could ever know coming from a pi private chef television directing background. So I'm grateful for this man every single day. And he's also my videographer. Yeah. <laughs> so a bunch of people are saying hello to you, Kenneth. So I'm going to give the phone back. Hello, everybody. Thank you. Well, Carmen St. Louis is saying, hey, Kenny. Australia, hey, Europe. Australia, Europe. Oh, amazing. What up? Okay. So.
so yeah, the next thing I was gonna show you guys on this breakfast brilliant breakthrough live was avocado toast. But then I remembered when I was in Canada back in January with my mom, if you guys tuned in then, if you haven't, you should go back because it was fun. I did it for my mom, like the kitchen that my mom, my mom, the kitchen that my mom owns, my mom's kitchen. When I was back home visiting her in Canada in January, it was cold. Um, but I did a whole thing on sandwiches and different ways to make sandwiches. And I did, I talked a bit about avocado toast, but using Angola. sweet potato as the bread. From Angola. Angola. Wow. Hello from Angola. Lutz, Florida. Lorena. What up, Lorena? I was wondering if you're joining us today. She watches every Sunday. Feli is the one that's watching from Australia, Europe. That's super cool. Um, back to the avocado toast. I mean, you've probably seen it. If you haven't, go to Pinterest and type in avocado toast. You're going to see 9,000 different ways to make toast with avocado on it. And all that is is bread with a piece of avocado mashed in it. And then you can add fresh tomato, um, hot chili flakes, sauteed mushrooms, nutritional yeast, um, shredded chicken, like anything. Pickled onions, anything you want just with toast, avocado, and add on anything else. I don't think I need to show you guys that. Go back to the sandwich swap out, I think that's sandwich switch up was the name, back in January, Facebook Live, and see all the different sandwich ideas. I made a sandwich out of cucumbers as the top and the bottom. I did a bunch of wonky things out of my mom's kitchen. And she was sitting there being the peanut gallery, hollering things from the living room as, as I was live. It was a super Christine fun. say back to the egg. Back to the egg. <laughs> Let's check in on the egg, shall we? So here's our, our egg, which is beautifully cooked. And it kind of looks like a piece of Picasso art. And I'm gonna add that to my Gallo Pinto plate. And like I said before, you could reuse the onion or you could remove it. I'm gonna remove just this outer shell. And I'm gonna put the whole damn thing, because I like onions. So I'm just gonna dump the whole damn thing onto my Gallo Pinto plate. And now, not only do we have a pretty, like we could peel off the outer excess, um, all of this stuff out here and get rid of it so it's more properly round. Or you can just do it like that. And not only do we have a nice perfect round egg, I'll take that off there, I might as well show you the whole deal. Dun dun dun, dun. it looks like a McDonald's egg McMuffin. Um, but you've also infused a bit of onion flavor into that. I didn't salt or pepper this, so we'd have to season it after the fact. Um, but how pretty is that? Dun, 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 dun. And you could do a whole bunch of those. Um, put like a dozen, get a bigger fryer pan, put like a dozen of the eggs in there and get your eggs going when you're cooking for a crowd. The other hack that I didn't tell you about, and this is why I have a muffin tin out here, it's not for making muffins. This is another great way to do eggs. I've done this a million times when I used to cater retreats from what, like, you know, up to 30 people. I would just put a little bit of oil into each one of these muffin tins and then crack one egg in each tin, bake it in the oven. Same idea. A little bit of a different texture, I find, but still works wonders. And there's also great ways to poach. You can poach eggs in a muffin tin as well by adding water and then cracking your egg inside with a little bit of white vinegar. So if you want to learn more about that, head over to the Pinterest or wherever else online because um, I don't really have the setup to show you how to do that today. <laughs> how long in the oven? Um, for baking it, to just do a baked egg, it depends. I would put the oven around like 275 to 300 degrees and I might maybe 20 minutes, not even, less than. Depends if you're preheating your oven or not. It's gonna depend on your oven calibration. Honestly, I haven't done it in a long time and I don't do eggs ever in the oven anymore because we're serving 100 people at a time. Um, but I would say maybe even put your oven at 350 and it would probably take 10, 15 minutes just because the eggs are set on top, depending on the likeness of your eggs as well. Some people like their eggs rather under, some people like them well done. So, traditional Costa Rican breakfast. Dun, 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 dun. Moving on. So the next thing we're gonna do is two more dishes. We're gonna talk about soaked oats as well as, I like that, the egg Meg muffin. <laughs> Mark Pearson. Hey, Mark Pearson with Pearson spelled the same way as me, but I don't think we're related. I don't have anyone in my family named Mark. I remember one Pearson person who was staying with me, maybe. That was, yeah, Sarah Pearson. Was, yeah, I think that might have been her, I don't know. There was another Pearson, but that, I don't know Mark Pearson, but that's interesting. Egg Meg Muffin. That's fun. Meg Muffin, love it. That's, I'm gonna, I mean, I think I need to do something with that. We're on to something. Okay, so two more things real quick. The next thing we're gonna do is French toast. And this, I do a chocolate chia French toast here at Rhythmia on the buffet every once in a while. Um, today we're gonna do another version. And 
I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, my wet ingredients and I'm going to put them on my blender because that's just easier. You could just mix them in a bowl and mash them up, but I'm going to do them on my blender here. So the really simple recipe that I'll share in the comments starts with two bananas. And this is a thickening agent as well as a sweetener. Again, tossing my banana peels into my garbage bowl that I have over here. So two bananas. Three quarter cup of whatever non-dairy or dairy milk that you choose. I'm doing um, almond milk here today, so three quarter cup. A little bit of cinnamon, but a teaspoon, a half a teaspoon of vanilla, and then I'm just going to blend that. And if you recall, if you've been watching my lives, this is like the base of a million of my recipes. Banana, nut, um, milk alternative, cinnamon, vanilla. It's like such an easy base for so many things. Blend that up. I'm not going to go any more crazy than that because I want it pretty thick, so I want a bit of texture of the banana. So I'm just going to pour that mixture into my big bowl here. You could add in some chia seeds or hemp seeds or anything else you want to add in for more flavor, nutmeg, allspice, you name it, but I'm keeping it really simple. Then I'll take a piece of my bread, toss it in just like we're doing regular old French toast. Coating this up real nice. And I had this bread sitting out, so it was a little bit stale, which I find absorbs the, the French toast mixture a little bit better. And then from there, all we need to cook it. We just need to cook it like a regular French toast. So easy. You don't need eggs. It's falling apart, so we're gonna do it in multiple pieces. Bye guys, so lovely meeting you. Have an amazing, amazing, amazing trip. Thank you. Love you. Thanks for dancing. <laughs> and, you, and, and I'm doing this in the exact same fry pan that I just did the egg and onion, but I don't know about you guys, but I like the sweet and savory component of breakfast. So when I, if I'm going to serve this, I might serve this with like a fried egg and some tempeh with it. There was a restaurant in Toronto that I really liked that did a really good herbed waffle with maple syrup and fried chicken. Okay. So good, chicken and waffles, but it was like that sweet, sweet, syrupy flavor with the savory herbs and chicken. It was really something I really enjoyed. So I'm gonna just set that out of the way. And while that's cooking, I'm gonna let that brown up on one side and then I'm gonna flip it. In the meantime, I'm gonna start on one more recipe. I'm gonna check in over here. I've got Meg Muffin, M apostrophe E G G Muffin. I like that, Christine. Marina McKenzie saying, Meg, you should do a cook with Meg session. Tell us what to buy for the following week and then we could all cook with you. That's a fun idea. That's a fun idea. Chocolate is life, says Moon. Agreed. Marina's saying hi. Adam Bell saying night muffin. Beautiful. Okay, so that's cooking away. We're gonna do one more quick recipe, and I'm sure you guys have maybe seen this if you're active on the recipe front in in um, in the world, because this is kind of a, was a big thing for a long time, and this is overnight so oats. And I'm just gonna show you the really most basic basic version of it. So what I've got here is about I'm gonna put in about half a cup of oats into this jar. And this is, well, let's do double. So a cup of oats. And I like to use the jar because it looks pretty. Then I'm going to add in a tablespoon of chia seeds. And this is just going to add, it adds our omega-3s and our fiber and our protein. And it also helps thicken things up. Then I'm going to add in equal part milk. So I have one cup oats. I'm going to add in one cup of almond milk. Just like that. And we could just leave it and call it a day. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a pinch of cinnamon because I have it here. And I'm just going to give it a mix. And you've probably seen the soaked oats if you've been here. I serve it on the Rivia buffet quite often. And then all we need to do is toss that in the fridge overnight. It's going to thicken up. The oats are going to absorb the milk and it's going to become quite porridge-like. Sometimes, depending on what kind of oats you're using, it might be a little bit thicker than you like in the morning, like almost like, like rubber cementy. All you need to do is add in a bit more of your milk of choice or any other liquid that you want to add in. Coconut water would be fine. Coffee. Um, and just get it to the liquid consistency you like. And then you can also add in the next morning, is what I like to prefer. I prefer to do it um, the, just before service, is things like flavorings, whatever flavorings you want to do. And my favorite thing to add in is all natural peanut butter and homemade berry jam. So this is a raspberry jam that we've made here. And I would mix those right in with a little bit of added cinnamon and then slice banana on top. And then you have this amazing dish. I might as well do it. 
You want to eat this, Kenneth, if mm -hmm. I make it? Yeah. So these oats were pretty quick cooking oats, so they're not going to take very long to absorb when I need them to absorb. So I'm going to add in about a tablespoon of the jam. Do you want all this peanut butter in there? Go ahead. So about a tablespoon and a half of the peanut butter. I mean, listen, go. Just do it. Do you want some banana in there as well? Sure. All right. I don't take lunch, just, I, I, just so you know. He doesn't take lunch I, on I'm Sundays. I'm waiting for that. Because I'm yeah. always forcing food yeah. on him. Um, so this is a clean I'm going to keep more space in my stomach for your recipes. A little bit of banana in there. You could toss in some whole sliced almonds, any other like, texture component you want to add in there. And then I would, you know, if I'm going to work, I can just take this fork with me and then eat it when I get there. Super delicious. And then I'm going to stir this up for you, Kenneth. Can, oh, I'm going to flip my French toast because it looks like it's just about ready to flip. You got it? Oh, come on! So good! Doesn't that, that's just the same look and feel and texture of like egged, egged French toast. <laughs> Elle was laughing at me. I'm pretty excited over here about my French toast. <laughs> so then I'm going to mix this in. Oh, this is going to be so delicious, Kenneth. Strawberry jam, peanut butter, PB&J, overnight oats that aren't overnight. But look at, you can see because these oats are pretty quick cooking oats, it's already thickening up pretty good. And that is one satisfying breakfast. Oh, it smells like peanut butter. So that's for Kenneth. I'm gonna have that French toast later. Which I think that's it. That's oh my gosh, that's all I've got for you guys today. So I'm gonna plate up the French toast. I'm gonna have a quick over here. Christine says I cook with Megan too in St. Louis. Adam Bell saying he's hungry now. Cook along with Meg Muffin. <laughs> cook along with Meg Muffin. Brody's watching. Hey, Brody. Nice to see you joining in. Amazing. You guys are so like this. This is life for me. I really, really enjoy doing these Facebook lives and connecting with all of you guys here. It really, really, truly makes me happy. I love that this is part of my job that I get to do. Okay, so let's just get this going. Let's rock out with the French toast. Da -da -da -da. I'm undercooking it, but you know what? It's plant-based. There's no eggs in here that we need to worry about. So I've got my, look at that. Doesn't look very pretty because the shape, because I ripped up the red, but you can get, you get the gist. Put a little bit of cinnamon around there. I have these strawberries because I was going to slice them. A little bit of strawberry on there. If I had that fried chicken and maple syrup like I was talking about, I would toss that on there. A little maple syrup. And a bada boom bada bing. So... That's our brilliant breakfast breakthrough hacks. That's all I got. How was that? How was for time? 2.32. Blue 42. That's the shortest Facebook Live I think I've ever done. Which is kind of um, astounding. Brody, oh my heart. Craig Malone, hi from Adelaide, Australia. Craig, are you just tuning in now because we're done. So you're gonna have to go back and watch this. The recording will be obviously listed in the video sec video sec portion of the Rhythmia Facebook page. Padmini saying, Meg, do you ever use cow milk at Rhythmia? Cow milk? No, Padmina, we use, I do use some um, non-vegan products, but I get them all from a local goat farm. So I use goat milk. I have goat milk available for a coffee as well as goat cheese and goat yogurt. It's from a, a goat farm right around the corner here. Um, but I don't use any cow's milk products here at all. All right. My friends, now that we have time, you can do a dance, says Carmen. <laughs> well, if you want to see me dance, you're going to have to come to Rizvia and attend my dance class every Friday at 2 p.m. We call it Celebration. It's a celebration of movement. It's a celebration of being reconnected with your body and soul. It's a celebration of no more inhibitions and just being so connected to our soul's energy and our self and our, and our own needs that we can use movement as medicine. And I teach that every Friday at 2 p.m. So future guests, please join me for that. And in the meantime, I'll do a little bit of this. <laughs> That's all I got. Okay, so my friends, again, please, any recommendations or ideas or anything you want to see, let me know. Put it in the comments. I'm going to put in the information about this stuff that I did today in the comments as well. And I look forward to seeing you guys next week. What are we doing next week, by the way? Next week will be June already. How the heck is that even possible? But next Sunday, we're going to be doing Quintessential Quinoa, which was a viewer request. I can't remember who it was, but one of our guests at some point in the last month or so 
requested that I do some quinoa recipes. So I'll do a few different recipes next week. There'll be some sweet and some savory. So tune in for that next Sunday. And then after that, I don't think I have any content decided yet. So keep the ideas coming. And I'll look into maybe potentially doing well one of these Cook With Meg segments. And I'll keep the recipes and ingredient list super small. So I'll add that to the docket. Um, but for now, we say farewell. Happy Sunday. The rains have just begun. I'm going to have myself something to eat and maybe take a nap. So nice seeing you guys. Have a beautiful week, and we'll see you next week. Love you. Bye.